another strange gear comparison video and uh, today I'm gonna serve a, uh, a small you know a small sliver of the musical population that doesn't always get uh, the love that we deserve and that is uh, small-handed aspiring bassists and so I count myself among your number like you I have small hands but perhaps unlike you I also have a small handful of bass guitars so I'm going to run through a few of these and uh, talk about, you know, some of these are ones that I've, I've held on to specifically looking for that sort of holy grail, very comfortable base, base that, that fits me well and that lets me just kind of focus on the playing and uh, be less constrained by sort of the physical obstacles to working my way around the neck. So this one is not one of my ideal small-handed bases. Uh, I'm just going to use this kind of as my my initial physical orientation to the problem at hand, as it were. And um, this is a Washburn AB45. It's a five-string semi-hollow. Um, so let me just kind of get warmed up and remind myself what we're going through. something else. All right, first up, I got the Ibanez, uh, I think it's the PN1B, I'm not sure, it's the Parlor Acoustic uh, Bass. So it's an acoustic electric bass. Uh, obviously that's a, it's kind of an unusual choice. You know, you, I'm already kind of putting myself in a corner as far as like the instrument spec itself by having an acoustic bass and in a loud volume, a high volume situation, this could have feedback problems, but this is real close to just feeling just like an acoustic guitar like uh, it's a little bit thinner body so but like a parlor sized guitar not the big dreadnought bell back here uh, so as an acoustic guitar player this feels really familiar really comfortable um, let's see how it sounds and here we go So easy to play, nice rich sound. If I hadn't messed up as much as I did, um, let's try to not hold that against the guitar. Um, one thing I will say, it's very nice to have this direct feedback here. Like the sound that's coming acoustically off the instrument is rich and warm and very inspiring. That's part of you know that's part of why I picked this thing up. You know, I, I picked it up in a shop and just sat around noodling with it, and it was super comfortable and just kind of talk myself into trying this out. Uh, I've taken this out live one time and I will say there is an adjustment in terms of the intonation sort of midway up the neck or you know say like seventh fret and above it's a little sensitive to finger pressure compared to other basses and because it's a bass with you know bigger gauge strings the action is kind of high has to be and so that that intonation I have found to be a potential minor issue I was able to kind of readily adjust sort of take some finger pressure off um, and you know just kind of use my ears but that's not something I'm used to having to do so that's a consideration now I'm not a slap player but let's just check um, if I wanted to do that, you know, you might think that this might not be an instrument that would be capable of it. So let's just check some popping and slapping. That's pretty easy to get to happen. The slap is, you know, maybe a little bit more difficult, but overall I'd say, you know, it's probably not really meant for it, but it can do it in a pinch. Um, like I said, I'm not someone who does that readily, and so it was as easy for me to do that 
same ballpark as doing it on another base. All right, let's move on to something else. And see next how that's up, done. we got the uh, Fender Squire Base Six. Uh, this is the Squire version of the uh, the Base Six. So this is a really kind of funky guitar. It's like some people think of it as like a a uh, a baritone guitar. It's uh, it's definitely longer scale than an electric guitar, but shorter than a typical bass scale. It's I, I don't know if it's its own unique scale. Um, also, the gauge of the strings, while thicker than a normal guitar, are also a lot um, a lot more slender than than bass strings, even on say like the the parlor guitar. Um, much closer to just ropey guitar strings. This is a guitar that I don't know the full history of it, but certainly I think has had a little bit of a resurgence with like these Beatles documentaries because this is something that was in George Harrison's arsenal to pull out when, you know, when Paul switched over to piano and George would maybe cover bass for a little while, he would do it on, um, on one of these or on the 60s Fender version of one of these. So. Here we are, and so a thing that I love about this guitar, because I'm a sucker for switches, I love Jaguars. Um, so this has got four switches, three control, the three Jaguar style pickups, single coil pickups here, and then another is kind of like a bass boost. Or bass cut, low cut. So <clears throat> it's probably actually a low cut <laughs> rather than a boost, but uh, other than that, simple controls just volume and tone and then you just add in what pickups you want so let me give you a little bit of a taste of this would be the neck the mid and the bridge so they kind of act like you'd expect you know a lot more bite you know, a little more you know gentle fluty sound now this of course because they're switches gives you the options to have any combination of them um, in circuit here so like I can have the outer two I could have you know just these two just these two so uh, some some interesting possibilities here I'm not gonna fully like explore this but let, let me just get at the heart of, of, of the matter today which is how does it play so here we go Okay, I have not taken this out to gig. Um, I have sort of been experimenting with it a little bit in the studio, but not really committed it to any track yet. So I don't have as much experience with this, but I'll tell you that the first thing I noticed is kind of like a blessing and a curse. First, I like that it has six strings and it is, you know, in terms of the geography of this bass, it's immediately translatable to a guitar player. Like, whatever you understand about the neck, on your your electric guitar is the same as what you have here. Um, I have seen, uh, an, you know, I have a friend of mine who's a player around town and was a regular at my most recent open stage is doing really interesting things with this. It's like the it's just like this and drums uh, for his band, and I'll maybe link to a little um, I'll link to a sample of that because you can see what. Someone who's really much more committed to this can do with this instrument. It's very interesting, uh, and I I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. Now, for me as someone with small hands, my left hand is very happy with this scale. Like, this is comfortable. This is familiar. That everything's within reach. My hand rests easily here. My right hand is less happy. The string spacing. Uh, and and here's a point where I'm a little different than you may be. Uh, if you were a guitar player who is used to playing with a pick, this string spacing would be familiar and easy. Um, I am a pickless, open-handed guitar player who mostly does rhythmic strumming. So when I switch to bass, I use my fingers, sort of thumb and pointer, thumb and forefinger, as my surrogate kind of rolling motion. 
This spacing is more difficult for me to navigate as a finger style bass player. Now, if you too would count yourself as someone who wants to use your right hand, just your fingers, this is definitely a consideration. The spacing is quite tight and it is an adjustment to try to, to get there. I think I'm a little bit ahead because I am used to the spacing on the guitar. Um, and so it's not that far off for me. It's just like, I don't normally like to play a guitar as a, a lead or bass instrument. I'm not a very facile lead player. Uh, that's just kind of a weakness of mine and not, not really my role. Um, anyway, that's what I would consider here is that this is kind of fun and interesting and for the right person, this is sort of perfect. Uh, for me, this is not quite like calling my name, but also is compelling enough and interesting enough that I do kind of want to hang on to it for a while and see what else comes of it. But that's kind of my take on this is that you definitely don't want to buy this sight unseen. If you are trying one of these out, it might be perfect because of its because of all the features I've mentioned, or it might be kind of a deal breaker for those very same features. All right, let's look. At okay, the lastly, we got my old trusty uh, Epiphone viola bass. Um, this is a short scale bass. So you know, in terms of the feel, this is not far off of. Uh, the scale of the base six, it's easy now. So as not only do I have small hands, I have short arms. So a lot of times for me, reaching out here is kind of part of the discomfort. This is very comfortable. Uh, I can do this. It is longer than a guitar, uh, to be sure, but doable also, to be sure. All right, let's just see how this sounds. Okay, so I may be biased because I'm, uh, I definitely am much more familiar with this bass. This is one that since acquiring it, I don't know, uh, six or seven years ago, this has been, you know, this has gotten a lot of mileage for me in the studio. Uh, this is something I used extensively in the Sunhouse Branch album, the last Sunhouse Branch album. This is something I've used extensively when demoing, when doing the Leaky Joe album. Um, this is a great solution for me. And I recently made the decision to swap out the strings for flat wounds. <clears throat> and that's made me love it even more. So I would say that um, of the options that I've considered, this is probably the most versatile bass at doing the standard bass things. And um, although I didn't do that sort of slap and pop test, I forgot to do that on the Squire, I've tried that before. And for all the reasons I mentioned about the string spacing, that is actually very difficult for me to make that happen. Whereas here, I'm not great at it, but it's all accessible. Um, so I'm not really gonna pick, pick a champion because this is my champion. This remains my champion. Those other two have, have not really unseated it. They've made me think about some stuff. They're interesting options. Um, you know, I've tried them out in different capacities, but ultimately for me, in terms of like, if I had to like go and try to give myself a leg up that I'm, I'm on a, a base where I'm the most facile on the neck and it's the most comfortable for me to improvise on or jam or you know, play something unfamiliar, this is the one. Plus, it's a great sounding bass and it can be very much a, like a Beatle bass or it can be you know, a little more aggressive um, and it runs great with my pedal rig. So for me, the uh, not this one specifically, what I'd say is that it remains my recommendation that if you are a small-handed bass player, 
that you should probably start your search by orienting yourself to just short scale bases uh, and that you may indeed find that that is all you need and that you don't need to go further further afield into um, you know the even shorter the parlor base which if if your base you know if you're not just someone with small hands but you're like a kid then you may need to go s smaller than this and the parlor base is probably a great option if you're a guitarist and you just want to have like more of a guitar idea that base six is really uniquely the perfect for that so like I said the base six it's perfect for some people uh, it's not really calling my name the parlor bass is you know shorter than I need it to be to get the job done but I appreciate how comfortable it is for sure and it's kind of tempting and tantalizing that way but it's hard for me to fit it into like the perfect job and it's a little limited as an acoustic bass it's a little limited in terms of what it's putting out there it's it's one nice sound but it's just one thing whereas this bass is going to have you know blendable uh, pickups uh, tone controls things that the other one uh, doesn't have quite as much control over anyway I know this is kind of a dumb comparison hopefully you're a small handed bass player and you're you know you're, you're clapping bravo and I hear you and I appreciate you and until next time